Man, got around. OG7 back here. And just like each and every day, I'm fortunate to take another breath on this plane of existence we call planet Earth, dude. I'm gonna share with you guys some stories of victory and glory. Some from my life, from some from things I've experienced, some from things that I've seen, and a lot of it from things that I know, because I'm an OG. Stories of victory and glory, the victory that you found in my channel, and you're gonna learn about beast mode law and what it's all about, because it's a certain mentality that changes your paradigm and opens you up to masculinity, dude. And the glory, when you study my channel so much because there's some heavy stuff in the comments, dude, there's some deep stuff in the description. I put a lot of knowledge into the description. If you do a play all my videos, you see I recommend books and movies and mindsets and websites, dude. So you can understand beast mode law and inculcate it to such a degree, it becomes part of you and it's your law because this is not OG's law, this is beast mode law. Because once you understand it and make it your own, You'll be willing to stand and fight and die and give your very last breath because you believe so deeply in it that you're willing to defend it with your very life. So without further ado, guys, I want to get into the topic of today's video, which is in maximum security prison, you must stop, watch, listen, and learn to see he was on the DL, a sodomite, demonic, booty war. Booty bandit. This is going to be life changing, dude, because see, there's a thing on the street that's like, oh, you can't judge a book by its cover. And prison goes way deeper than that, man. Some books have fake covers on them, dude. Some books, man, you know, it looks like it's, it's, it's gold, but it's actually a bunch of shiza, dude. So you got to read a few chapters to really know what's going on. So I want to get into this video because. It shouldn't be that long because here's the whole thing. When you're in maximum security prison, let me go down the list here. First of all, man, you must stop this wazzy wazzy woo woo slap rock, oh, woe is me victim mentality. Okay, dude, I don't know your situation. You didn't listen to my videos to say, hey, stop being involved in the criminal activity, uh, drugs, robbing people, carjacking, creep, just foul stuff I asked you pretty pleased with sugar on top square up because what's on the other side and you ain't built for it. How do I know? If you built for it, you'd be like some of these uh, career criminals that grew up from YA and they still in and out. It's like it's like a second home to them, dude. It's their, they're institutionalized. That's how you know if you're built for this life or if you're not. I'm not institutionalized and the hells and the horrors that I experienced, man, you know, almighty God touched my spirit to say, hey, be a messenger for me so that you shall save these young boys from being smitten down by the sodomites when they go up in there. Because everybody, man, it's like Hansel and Gretel, dude. Everybody comes off like they're nice and they're looking out for you. Nobody gives a freak about you, dude. The warden don't give a fuck about you. The government don't give a fuck about you. The guards don't give a fuck about you. The medical staff don't give a fuck about you. The social workers don't give a fuck about you. And most of all, your homeboys don't give a fuck about you. Why? How do I know? Ask me. How do you know, G? Because if they gave a fuck about you, let me tell you like this, guys. I want to tell you about this uh, movie, man. It's called Game of Thrones. So this one dude, I think his name was Jon Snow. His uncle, man, ran into some White Walkers. These are just zombies, right? And he got bitten by a zombie, so he was in the process of changing. So he's half man, half zombie. And while he's still human and the man, he's killing zombies left or he's killing white walkers left and right because he's invincible because he's on his way to becoming one. So while he's still human, he's looking out for his family. He's killing white walkers left and right. And he comes to tell Jon Snow a message. Hey, nephew, whatever you do, don't go south of the wall. Because there's nothing but death and dismemberment in there. See, that's love, homie. We can't we can't control the hand that we've been dealt. We control how they be play the hand. So let's say you was born in the hood or the barrio or a trailer park in an impoverished area or a poor situation. I understand. I come from that environment. But for you to perpetuate it onto the younger generation to help them become drug dealers and pimps 
and players and hustlers and jackers and dope dealers, man. Come on, man. That's bad karma, baby. So that's all I'm saying, guys. You have to stop being a victim and understand that however you got there, you got to sit down. This is why I like solitary confinement. And those of you who make your little funky little comment, oh, you did most of your time in PC. Let me tell you something, dude. If you did most of your time in PC, there's paperwork on you, dude. So why don't you dox me if you, if you got so much information? You a silly, soft motherfucker. I was in the shoe. Yeah. Security housing unit. I was a threat to the staff. I was a threat to inmates, dude. PC is a whole different area to fucking prison, man. So shut the fuck up. You might learn something, you soft, panty waist, cell soldier. So first one thing you want to do, like I said, man, is you want to go to solitary confinement for breaking the dude off. The first opportunity, somebody says something to you that don't sit well, like goes against your masculinity, dude's hitting on you or sex play or standing too close to you, dude, or looking too deep in your eyes, man, or touch you inappropriately. Break them off, man. And I'm going to make a video on how to, the right way to do it because most of the stuff happens in the chow hall. I'm just going to be honest with you. Most of it happens in the chow hall. The second place it happens is the yard. And the third place is the day room. Now, when you get to the work situation, you really fuck. But I'm talking about when you first hit the pen. The first time they, they, they check you, they try to take your food. So I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to make a video on that. So the whole thing, once you get to the solitary confinement, stop. And understand, how did you get yourself in that situation? So now that you understand how you got yourself in that situation, you want to say to yourself, how do I get myself out of that situation? And here's the answer, guys. You want to become aware of your surroundings, aware of your friends, aware of your enemies, aware of your allies, aware of the whole situation. That's why I said in this video, you must stop and watch. The second thing you have to do when you're put back in general population if you follow what I told you, don't listen to these cell soldier sword boys. Once you break a dude off, let me tell you my story, guys. I've been to seven different prisons, and I only had to break a dude off once. And no matter what these guys come in the comments talking about, oh, the gangs don't play that, and they would put hits out on you. And uh, Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you a true story, guys. Gang members aren't fearless like me. And gang members fear me more than they fear the shot caller. Why? Here's why. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent. You OGs back me up. When you're in prison, you need all your faculties, dude. You need your health, your strength, your, your mentality, dude, your cardio, your ability to ambulate. You need all your teeth so you can eat. You want to be healthy because prison is not an environment where you want to be sick. So the techniques I give you guys on most of my videos, dude, where I break a dude's jaw, first of all, there goes his ability to eat. I hit him in his windpipe, and I crush it. There's ability, his, his inability to swallow and to breathe properly. Now he can't do burpees. He can't lift weights. I'm telling you the mind of a monster. Then when I break his collarbone, man, whatever collarbone I break, if you don't understand physiology and human anatomy, he can't use that fucking arm, dude, the rest of his prison stay. And then when I hip toss him down into his face, and I'm hoping I crush his fucking his frontal lobe, bro, he's fucked off. And the way that I got his arm trapped, dude, when I toss him, I'm breaking his arm. Some dudes, man, I don't get to do that technique because it's happening too fast. So what I do is I kick their knee out backwards. Because, look, your arm bends this way. It doesn't bend the other way. That's why they call it an arm bar. Your knee's the same way. Your knee bends like this. When I kick a dude's knee out the other way, man, come on, man. I don't know if you had your knee kicked out the other way. I've had double knee surgery on both of my knees from doing judo and, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, dude. And your, your legs never work the same. Now, it's one thing I'm out here. I'm a veteran. I can go to the VA, and I can get all kind of cortisone and steroid shots in my knees, and I can get painkiller, dude, and I can be on the walker. Are you in prison? Come on, man. So dudes don't want to be broke up, so when the shot call is like, hey, man, that full G broke off of Killer Crip, Loke, whoop de whoop And who's the torpedoes? You youngsters go over there and handle, dude. Or we gonna handle you. And the youngsters look at the shot caller. And then they look at me. And they look at what I did to Killer Loke, whoop de whoop whip de whap and he's fucked off. They rather PC up, why? Because now when you PC up, you can do the rest of your term in the, in the protective custody. And then when you get out, you can go on the witness protection program 
and you can decommission from the gangs, bro. And you guys making your comment, don't listen to me because I'm a decommission drop. I was never a gang member. That's how I can tell. You was a baby boy living in your mama's basement, your weed smoking, sherm inhaling motherfucker. You dumb as fuck. If you listen to my channel, I've never been a gang member. I don't believe in, no, nobody's telling me what to do. Except maybe the government and the police, because I, I value my freedom. But a fucking gang member, a soft motherfucker, man, get the fuck out of here. You're going to have to kill me, bro, and you don't have what it takes. Even if you got a strap and I got a strap, my man, we can both meet Jesus together because you're a coward. you soft, motherfucker. So that's the next thing, dude. You must watch. You must watch and see who's your friends, who's your foes, and who's your allies. Here's the next one, guys. You must listen. Quit talking so much. Be a man of few words. Be a stoic. And this is, this is, what, this is what's great about the shoe. Let me help you youngsters out. Once you break a dude off, and if you really want to know how to break a dude off, watch my next upcoming video. I'm going to tell you exactly how to break a dude off in the chow hall, even for those of you who can't fight. You don't do push-ups and sit-ups and burpees. You ain't got no muscle. You're a soft prince-looking motherfucker. You're a soft Michael Jackson <laughs> type of motherfucker. I got you covered, baby. I do this, man. When I teach martial arts to most people, yeah, I have taught martial arts to military savages, to warriors, and genetically gifted specimens. But I also teach martial arts to women and small dudes, man. Most of my clients are small businessmen who are rich and they don't want to work out. They just want to know how to fight deadly. They come to me because I teach them how to fight fast and fight deadly. So stay tuned for my next video. So after you watch and see who your friend, your foe, your allies are, you want to be a man of few words. And here's what I want to tell you what's great about going to shoe, man. If you want to watch this movie about how the shoe affects you, watch this movie called Hurricane. And there's also a movie called Undisputed with Ving Rhames and uh, Wesley Snipes. Hurricane is with Denzel Washington. Hey, man, the shoe, it, it fucks you up. The shoe broke me down and built me up so many times. That's why you guys talk about I'm a J-Cat. Yeah, you're right. I am a J-Cat. I'm fucked up. I'm fucked off. But, hey, I accept my fate because it, it's part of my personality quirk. That's what makes me eccentric. But here's what I want to tell you. Youngsters, what's great about going to shoe, once you go to the shoe... Everybody in prison know you went to the show and you handle your business. You a dirty fighter. You a low down, dirty Vato Holmes. You a low down, dirty dude. You fight dirty. You snatching nuts, bro. You poking eyeballs out with sparks. You just, <laughs> you just a dirty fighter. Ain't no Queensbury rules. Pull up your dukes, man. We're going to square off. No, you fighting dirty like OG Silverback. You a savage. You a down low, you a down low scum of the earth fighting dude, man. Bottom feeder. So here's what I want to tell you, youngsters. When you come from the shoe, use that as an opportunity to become stoic. And then when people talking to you, man, hey, hey, youngster, you just got out of the shoe. Man, I don't know if I'm in the shoe, out of the shoe. I just knew when I was down there, I was hearing voices and I was feeling evil spirits into my body. So I'm just here on the yard and I'm trying to keep everybody safe. I just want to stay to myself until I get exercised these demons out. So can you respect my space, OG? You talk like that. Everybody know the sh Hey, man, let me tell you something, man. Most prisoners ain't been to the shoe. Why are they afraid of the dark? Yeah, they're scary. I was born in the dark, motherfucker. I'm like Bane from Batman. What was that movie Batman was in? Uh, dark Knight, motherfucker. I'm not bragging. Something's wrong with me, man. But I'm telling you, youngsters, go to the shoe. When you come out, now you have the opportunity to watch and listen. You be a man of few words. I just came from the shoe and I'm fucked up. Give me some space, OG. They'll, they'll, they'll back up off because everybody know when you come out of the shoe, you kind of fucked up. So now you just want to listen. You want to listen to everybody's conversations, dude. Keep your head on a swivel. Always listening to who's talking to who, what they saying. Because then the truth will set you free, dude. And there's the most important thing. You want to learn a dude's patterns and behavior. See, this is what's great about maximum security prison. You become a student of human behavior. Why? You're like in a fishbowl. Everybody in prison is looking to have a program, dude. This is another reason why people don't want to go to the shoe. It, it fucks off your program. What's your program? This is the program for the Mexicans. I got love for my gentes, my Latinos. Mexicans get up, dude. They do roll call. They do like 5,000 burpees, 5,000 push-ups, sit-ups, jumpy jacks. Then they, they they play handball homes. 
and then they sharpen up their knives, Holmes, their Cuentes, Holmes, and then they go ahead and they, they eat together, Holmes, they, they spread the news like, hey, Holmes, who's new on the yard, Holmes, who's got to be removed, Holmes, who's having a problem, who's got the drugs, Holmes, like that, and then they shoot up with some heroin, Holmes, and they just sit back, Fato, yeah, and they talk about their old ladies until they get a boner, and then they, they're looking at pictures of their old ladies, they gotta give love to the homies, like that. And here's the here's the <clears throat> here's the program in the woods that I've seen, like especially like the Aryan brothers. They get up, do a roll call, they done about two thousand burpees, two thousand push ups, sit up squats, deep knee bends, dude. They playing some handball, dude. Maybe they'll play some basketball. This is back when they had the weights. They go on lifting some weights, dude. And then what they doing is they them they doing they getting down to the drug business with the Mexicans, man. They moving drugs, processing drugs, this and that. And then they getting down on some they getting down on some heroin too, or maybe they doing some crystal meth. And then they you know they they talking stories about the street, and when they get horny, they give love to the homies too, right? Blacks got a similar program. The blacks that I seen like, I'm gonna tell you the blacks that I most respected in prison was the dudes from the Bay Area. They they were the fiercest dudes in prison, and they had the smallest numbers, bro. And I remember I was in the pen with Cali Muscle, man. Cali Muscle. You guys think he's a clown, man? Let me tell you something, dude. That's a caricature, dude. He's just an actor for YouTube to get paid. He's an actor for Facebook. He's an actor. Cali Muscle taught me how to get into acting, bro. I contacted Cali Muscle, asked him how to get into acting. And he don't remember we was in the pen together, but I told him we was in the pen together at San Quentin. He's like, yeah, 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 man. This is how I got into acting. So he's an actor. But he's a savage, dude. He kept the Bay Area dudes straight. They get up in the morning, dude. They do their runs around the yard like they would run for cardio, do their push-ups, sit-ups, burpees, body weight. That's where the bar stars come from, it comes from prison. That's where it all started from, all the human body flags and dips and sideways dips and all this stuff and pull-ups, weird pull-ups, muscle-ups. That all comes from prison and do all their exercise and stuff. And then, of course, here comes the weed smoking after they spread. They smoking the weed. And then uh, I'm not saying Cali Muscle did this, and I'm not saying the Bay Area dudes did this, but some other gangs, then that's when the love from the homies come in. Because once you put drugs and pruno and, and alcohol together, come on, man. It's the great inhibitor. That's when you start to get horny, dude. So this is all I'm saying, man. You want to stop, watch, listen, and learn. Because then, dude, once you learn a dude's habits, then you can see. So then if you got a homeboy, you think he's cool. And I'm saying, you know, in prison, you can follow people because there's only so many places you can go. And you can follow a person. You could be like 10, 15 people back and you just kind of like, you know, you're keeping pace with dude. You're just acting like, you know, you're just doing your thing. And you see where he's going and then you kind of drift over where he's going. So if you got a homie that you think is cool and then you see he's always, every time he's hitting the yard, he's going over to the corner, the dark side. And he's talking to some homosexuals or some transvestites, dude, or some trannies, dude. Dudes that's openly gay, right? The bottom dudes. Because I'm going to tell you something. This is what people get twisted. You guys get the word booty bandit and booty warrior twisted. Everybody does. I'm going to tell you the real meaning of it. A booty warrior is a dude, just a square dude. He's supposedly straight. He's got a girlfriend or wife on the street. Maybe he's getting family visits. He got a wife coming in. He's blowing her back out, but he's bi. He likes men, but so he's not taking it. No, but what he does is he pays whatever the, the gay prostitutes wants, you know, whether he gives them canteen money in their books, drugs, so that he can go up in them in a secret secluded place. Maybe it's in a laundry room. Maybe it's meat cutting plant. Maybe it's in the, it's in a school. Maybe it's in the, 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 the religious services, dude. There's different, maybe there's the bathroom and he's doing it away from his homies. He's, he's on the down low, like he's so slick with it. He's so slick with it that that's why you got to watch his program, dude. Like he's on the down low. That's a booty warrior. He loves booty. He pays for it. No, he's not taking it. See, that's what you got on the, no, that's a, sorry, that's a booty bandit. He's not taking it. He's paying for it. He's sweet talking homosexuals. No, booty warrior. That's the dude that's openly taking it. And I wanted to share with you guys the difference. Now, for those of you who thought I was rambling, man, maybe this is not the channel for you, dude. Because in life, dude, 
everything's not the bridge cliff notes version. You just can't get you. You remind me of youngster. Just you know, you read some PUA books. You want to go to a girl in the mall. You want to walk up to a girl in the mall. And go, hey, you're pretty. Let's fuck. Man, life doesn't work like that, dude. You got to be able to have conversation. You got to be able to walk with kings and converse with fools, right? You got to have the ability to have a smart, stimulating conversation so you can build up character recognition. So for those of you who want to be enlightened and illuminated, man, thumbs up the video, dude. Leave a comment for the algorithm, man. You're new to the channel. If you're digging this vibe, subscribe and hit the notification all button. And if you're not digging this vibe, skip along, little doggy, because look here, dude. I don't want to be making little puppies throw up because if you're not ready to have some real meat because you're still on infant meal and baby milk and you're being breastfed, this is not the channel for you. And so for those of you who dig in the realness and the rawness, man, share the video, man, so other people won't be bamboozled. So until next time, hold yourself back. Oh.